is God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Welcome to this online worship service with us at First Federated Church on this Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit on that first Pentecost so long ago. I'm Forrest Frosty the Cromwell, the minister at First Federated Church. Our call to worship today comes from the Gospel of John. It happens to be the lectionary reading assigned for today. As we prepare our hearts and minds uh, to worship together, I invite you to listen to these words from John's Gospel. Jesus said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let anyone who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now Jesus said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Together, let us glorify God in this time of worship. Our scripture reading today comes from the second chapter of Acts, the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Our Lord God, on this Pentecost Sunday, as your church gathers in unity of the Spirit and yet scattered because of the pandemic, we ask for your Holy Spirit to descend upon us. Set our hearts on fire so that we may do your will in the labor in which we engage. With the wind of the Holy Spirit, don't let us sit back as passive observers, but enable us to be active participants. Now, more than ever, is a time of the proclamation of the good news of God's love for us, not only on the mountaintop, but even in life's deepest valleys. Just as your church was born on that first Pentecost, not as an exercise in futility, but the empowerment of dynamic people who know you and love you, just as you know and love us. Make us so joyful that we find it difficult to sit back and watch. We want to be a part of your healing love and mercy. We want to be a people who bear the word that your love if for us is eternal and will never let us go. That Jesus Christ, our Savior, proclaimed and taught that love in all that he did and said, modeling for us a new way of life. Pick us up and propel us forward into your world. Help us to remember that you have given us the things that we need to be your disciples. We may not have all the spiritual gifts individually, but we do when we join together. A second scripture reading from today, this one from the, letter, the first letter to the uh, Corinthian church. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecies. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allows to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into the one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one spirit. May God add understanding to the reading of that word. Amen. Our text for the day comes from the seventh verse of that passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. To each has been given the manifestation of the Spirit. Join me in the spirit of prayer. May those things said today that are true be engraved upon every heart. 
Anything said that is false be quickly forgotten and cause no harm. In your name we very humbly pray. Amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, I want to tell you a story. It is a story that was first told by Neil Bosey. Neil is a Lutheran pastor who, in a church that he served, their, their governing board, their consistory, their session, whatever you wish to call it, had the tradition of having each one of the elders or leaders of the church take a month to be on call for the pastor in order to do some emergency visits. Well, one night, the pastor received a phone call, and he had to go to the home of one of the church members. It seems that there had been a murder-suicide, and there were children in the home. Not knowing what to do or what he was going to possibly say, he called up one of the members of the uh, board, a man by the name of George, and asked George if he was available to go with the pastor to visit this home. He did not tell George what the reason for the visit was, it's just that they had to go visit the home. George readily uh, said yes. The pastor went by to pick George up, and as they were driving along, the pastor, Neil Bosey, filled George in on the details. George listened quietly, looking out the window, the side window of the car, and then he said, you know, pastor, I'm not on duty this month. Susan is, but they were already on their way. When they arrived at the house, as you can imagine, it was a chaotic scene. And in the midst of the chaos, Neil Bosey uh, was working with police officers and other people who were coming in the house, measuring everything up. And out of the corner of his eye, he happened to catch George, who had assembled all the children together there and was quietly talking to them and holding them. And in the midst of the chaos of the scene, there was a place of calm, George and the children. And while I'm sure at one level they were traumatized, George was able to diffuse the situation. I'm sure that he assured the children they were going to be okay, that a terrible thing had happened that was forever going to change their lives but that they were going to be okay, that God was going to be with them. Their church was going to be with them. They were still surrounded by love. When Pastor Neil Bosey and George were returning home, Neil Bosey said to George, I didn't know that you were so good with Children, how'd you do that? George, a rather humble man, said, do what? Well, you got the children calm, and in the midst of chaos, that was one place of complete calm and peace. George thought for a minute and then shrugged his shoulders and said, I don't know. I guess that's what I thought you were supposed to do. George was not aware of one of the spiritual gifts that he had been given by God, that he could be a peacemaker. In one of their studies, Neil Bosey and Patricia Haller wrote uh, a piece called The Spiritual Gift Connection. They wrote that God has given each Christian two vitally important gifts. The first is the gift of faith in Jesus Christ his work of redemption, and thus the forgiveness of sin. The second is the gift of one or more special abilities, which are to be used for the purpose of unifying the body of Christ and for the growth of God's kingdom. I truly believe with all my heart that everyone who is listening to this message has been given a gift by the Holy Spirit to be used for the unifying of the body of Christ and the growth of God's kingdom. I believe that God speaks to us through the circumstances of our lives. 
that oftentimes we are thrown into water that appears to be over our heads. But through prayer and relying upon the grace of God, we are able to make it through. In the second letter to the Corinthian church, the apostle wrote something that the resurrected Lord had said to him. The Apostle Paul, you may recall, prayed multiple times to have a thorn removed from his side. We don't know what that thorn was, but it was something that troubled him and that he believed hindered his work for the glory of God. But in a vision or a dream or however Paul received these words from Christ, he shared in this letter to the Corinthian church. Christ saying to him, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is manifest in your weakness. You see, ministry is not about us. Ministry is about the wisdom, the strength, the power, the gifts, the love that God gives to us and that passes through us into this world that is troubled. This morning we celebrate the sacrament of communion. It is a sacrament that unifies us, not only with one another, though we are apart, but also with the church through all times and places. We are given a mystical union with those faithful believers, those individuals who took Jesus seriously in ages gone by, as well as joined together with those who will come after us and one, with one another. We are unified by the love of God, by simple elements of common bread and fruit of the vine, set aside for a holy use. You have been gifted. God has set you aside for a holy use. Be fed at God's table. Do the work of the kingdom and glorify God. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women will come from north and south, east and west, who sit at table in God's kingdom. This is the Lord's table, and he invites those who trust in him to come and to enjoy the meal that he has prepared for us. According to the Gospel of St. Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Let us pray. Spirit of God, we have gathered at this table together to pray and to make ourselves ready for your coming. We celebrate today the long history of your salvation of your people, beginning with Abraham and Sarah and all those whom you led through wildernesses along the way. We feel like we are in the wilderness in some ways now, and so we thank you for the great assurance we have that you are with us even when we feel lost and lead us into new directions. Give us faith that when you come like the wind, though we do not see you, yet we may hear what you are saying to us and discern your movement. Give us courage that we may not fear the tongues of flame let all that is unworthy, impure, and sinful be burned from our lives. May we know that it is love that burns so brightly and love that strips away our sin. Give us an open mind, Lord, that the truth you bring may make its home with us. Truth to set us free, truth to guide us and inform us, truth to lead us in the way of your will. And now give your Holy Spirit in the breaking of this bread and the sharing of this cup, so that we may all be one with your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. When Jesus was with his disciples for that last night on earth, after they had given thanks, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat all of you, for this is my body, broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, and said, this cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
You proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is prepared. Let us share these gifts which Jesus has given to us. You can stop it now. Press the red button. into this world and return no one evil for evil or reviling for reviling. Learn how to love and forgive one another as freely as God in Christ has loved and forgiven each and every one of us. And may the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ here on earth, may these three things live in your hearts so that you may produce the fruit of God's kingdom every day of your life. Amen. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior.